from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Jonathan Ambarian in Helena. It's the last day of Montana's candidate filing period, and we'll soon know exactly who's running in this year's state elections. I'll let you know what we'll be watching for. The Gallatin Association of Realtors released a one-of-its-kind report taking a look at the housing market. I'll have more on that coming up. Good morning, Southwest Montana, 631. It's so different with this time change. Last week it was starting to be sunny at this time. No idea. It's I've a little dark. Been up for seven hours or whatever it is. Yeah. I just spring ahead, fall apart. I can never remember how that works. Absolutely. And, yeah. Well, but, I, I want to say happy anniversary, by the way. Well, thank you. What is it, 33 yeah. years ago to the day 33 years you started ago today. your career in Butte? Somebody made a mistake and uh, actually hired me. The best that's mistake. It. That Look was at it. Us well, now. here we are. That's uh, yeah, Sorry, folks, you're having to deal with the uh, consequences <laughs> of that from 33 years ago. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Of course. 1989, I started this. Uh, well, congrats. Adventure. So we'll celebrate in Butte, right? That's it. That's it. where it all started right there, the big train station. So, uh, Meantime, uh, let's take a look at what it's uh, like out there. We're talking about some moisture. Thank you for mentioning that. I, yeah, yeah, of I course. I wasn't counting on you doing that, so <laughs> wow. Um, a little moisture coming our way uh, this, uh, this afternoon uh, in the Butte area. We'll see some in the evening hours as well. As far as uh, conditions outside right now, windy in Livingston, Ennis, uh, Virginia City. Be ready for some of that. Uh, temperatures are going to be on the nice side before that little system rolls through here. We could see some slick roads tomorrow. Uh, I'll have all the details of that uh, coming up in just a couple minutes. Awesome. See you in a bit. Well, candidate filing for the 2022 election officially closed last night. MTN's Jonathan Imbarian has the story from the Capitol. The doors are closed here at the Montana Secretary of State's office, and so is the two-month window for candidates to file to run in the 2022 state elections. The Secretary of State reported 40 more filings Monday before the deadline at 5 p.m. Altogether, 287 people have filed to run for state legislature and 46 more for the other state races on the ballot. Unsurprisingly, the most crowded fields are in the races for Montana's two new congressional districts. In District 1 in western Montana, where former Congressman Ryan Zinke is trying to return to the House, he's one of five Republican candidates. They also include former state senator Al Olszewski, businesswoman Mary Todd, Matt Jetty of Missoula, and Mitch Hoyer of Whitefish. Three Democrats are running, health policy expert Cora Newman, attorney Monica Trinnell, and former state representative Tom Winter. A libertarian is also in the race. In District 2 in eastern and central Montana, incumbent Matt Rosendale will be in the Republican primary with Kyle Austin of Billings, James Boyette of Bozeman, and Charles Walkingchild of Helena. On the Democratic side, the candidates are State Senator Mark Sweeney, former Billings City Councilwoman Penny Ronning, and Skylar Williams of Billings. Three Libertarians and an Independent also filed. On Monday, Montana Public Service Commission Chair James Brown filed for state Supreme Court. He's running against incumbent Justice Ingrid Gustafson of Billings and District Court Judge Michael McMahon of Helena. Supreme Court Justice Jim Rice is also running for re-election against Bill Dalton of Billings. You can find a full breakdown of all the candidate filings on our website. Now we'll shift our attention to the primary campaigns. The primary election is set for June 7th. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. And it's not a big surprise that in Gallatin County, you can stop and ask almost anyone, and they will know the median price of a home. MTN's Edgar Cedillo is on the story of the Gallatin Association of Realtors new study that takes a deeper look at the expensive local housing market. The talk of the town has been how much housing prices have gone up in Gallatin County. Now the Gallatin Association of Realtors released a housing report taking more insight into the housing market. Housing is top of mind on the lips of every Gallatin County resident. The housing report is something that has never been done in Gallatin County. It's a comprehensive, objective analysis of both the sale and rental housing market in Gallatin County. A lot plays into the housing market, one of those factors being housing affordability. So let's take a look at affordability. The Housing Affordability Index in Gallatin County is a measure of how well a household can afford a house payment if they bought the house at a median price and earned a median income. The most recent numbers from 2019 show Three Forks is the only city in the county still affordable by this measure. Most cities have seen a steady decrease in affordability since 2015. Big Sky ranks as the least affordable city in the county. 
what makes Bozeman and the Gallatin Valley a desirable place to live, those fundamentals, I believe, will remain unchanged. Driving those who move here, quality of life. Patrick Morrissey, who moved from Great Falls to Bozeman, says trying to find housing for his family has been a challenge. The experience has been, I guess, incomplete is the best way to put it. His experience has been night and day. I had a four bedroom, three bathroom house that I'm paying about $1,750 a month for. As he searches for a home for his family in Bozeman, most of what comes up in Bozeman is nowhere near what he had in Great Falls. In Bozeman, that equivalent house, 3000 maybe 3500 a month, if I could even find it. The median price of a house in Gallatin County was $237,000 in 2011. It took six years for the price to double, and it was just around 2017 when the median price was 400000 This is when the price really skyrockets. Last year, the median price was just shy of $700,000. Morrissey's option is now to look outside the city. Um, renting will it'll be the initial thing for sure, and it'll, it'll be in Belgrade. The million dollar question those of us in Gallatin County keep asking. Is it ever going to get easier here in Gallatin County? <laughs> Anybody who tries to tell you that they know exactly what the market's going to do is someone maybe that should be looked at a little um, suspiciously. In Bozeman, Edgar Cedillo, MTN News. The last few months have been nothing but a bit of a roller coaster ride for parents across the country. Many with kids under the age of five still anxiously waiting for approval of the COVID-19 vaccine. So how soon could it be approved? Chris Conti has some answers many parents will want to hear. Life for Emerson Sackets and her brother Bodie is pretty simple. She's four, he's one and a half. Her mom, Mallory, had hoped to be here to chat, but got pulled into meetings at the last minute. It's been like a constant shuffle to just adjust to the changing bar. Most parents these days can empathize with the balancing act she's trying to pull off. Like so many families across this country, the Sacketts are stuck in a sort of pandemic limbo. Mallory and her husband are both vaccinated, but Bodie and Emerson still aren't old enough to be eligible for the shot which has only added to the uncertainty of the last few years. I think once we got vaccinated, we had the thinking of like, all right, we've done everything we could and can do to protect ourselves and those around us. And I, them not having that option, I guess, kind of puts you a little bit on edge. This has been a bit of a roller coaster emotionally over the past six months. Buddy Creech serves as the director of Vanderbilt University Medical Center's vaccine research program. As a parent himself, he understands the frustration so many are feeling. That tug and, and pull, and it's, it's just hard right now for a lot of parents to determine which side is out. Get your bandaid on. Yep. Earlier this year, it seemed like the FDA was ready to approve a COVID vaccine for kids under five. Then the FDA said it needed to wait until data on a third dose became available before moving forward. What we realize is children aren't just little adults. Uh, they simply don't need as much vaccine to make a really good immune response. About 1.9 million kids under the age of five have contracted COVID in the last two years. Most are spared the worst of the illness. That doesn't mean, though, kids wouldn't benefit from the vaccine. We're always trying to find that Goldilocks dose that gives us just enough an immune response without having too much of those normal side effects. Buddy Creech believes kids under the age of five will be able to get at least one shot by the start of the summer. We really have to just trust the process that we've had in place in the United States for many years. Back at the Sackett's house, they aren't putting life on hold. But like so many other parents across this country are continuing to navigate things with a bit of extra caution until their entire family can be vaccinated. Yeah! I'd rather it be right and be effective than rushed and not be. I'm Chris Conti, 